everyone is focused on the Federal Reserve and today the US CPI, when instead they should be glued to the energy sector. Oil prices, gasoline prices, they are sending us fundamental signals about the state of the global economy. And increasingly, it is not looking good. We've got new lows for oil prices, new lows for gasoline prices, and what's more, can tango on the WTI futures curve has absolutely exploded here, which, as we'll talk about in a minute, is another critical signal about the state of the world. This despite the fact that OPEC has continued to cut production, including an announcement just a couple weeks ago. Suddenly that doesn't matter anymore because what we're seeing in the energy sector is the fundamental physical side of what's already being priced into the bond market. And that is increasingly the landmine scenario, the global deflationary recession, which in the case of oil and gasoline is literally disinflation because they are so much a part of the CPI. But as I said, the focus on the CPI or the Federal Reserve is misplaced here. It's why oil and gasoline prices are going lower that matters and what that means about the, not the next CPI, but the, really, the real economy moving forward from here. The today's CPI report was basically a dud. It confirmed the disinflationary conditions, which we're seeing outside of the shelter prices, which go into the CPI bucket. And the shelter prices, as we've talked about many times before, and as many people are highlighting now, understanding that it's an artificial num number. Shelter imputations are from home price appreciation over a year ago. They're not about what's happening in today's economy, and yet that's the largest mover, the largest contributor to CPI rates as they currently are. And even now, the CPI numbers are getting back into dis solidly, thoroughly disinflationary territory. But what's more important than the November CPI or the Federal Reserve's response to the November CPI is why the CPI was low and why it's going to continue to be low from the perspective of the energy market and energy sector. Gasoline prices, as I mentioned, gasoline, under $2 a gallon at the CME. These are wholesale prices, $1.98 for the January, the January 2024 contract. That's the lowest in since a long time ago. That's the lowest in quite some time because demand continues to weaken. The good news for Americans is that retail gasoline prices are going to continue moving lower than they have, as I've mentioned in previous videos before. The average gasoline price is down to 313.7 and it's going to keep going lower because the economy is not in good shape. The CPI says disinflation, gasoline and energy prices are saying you ain't seen nothing yet. Now, before we get into the rest of the video, I do want to mention that Eurodollar University, we're having our Christmas sale. Some of the best deals we've ever put together. You can check that out at our sales page at the website, eurodollar.university. I will mention just recently, just yesterday, in yesterday's deep dive analysis, started going into what will be a regular series here or a quasi series about how all of these esoteric indications we've been following have performed throughout history, starting with yesterday, Eurodollar futures. How did Eurodollar futures fare in telling us about what we should expect or what we could expect in the future? That's part of the deep dive analysis, which is part of the package we're offering at our Christmas sale at eurodollar.university. Now, gasoline prices are moving substantially lower in large part because that's where oil is going. As of today, just before I started recording, the January 2024 contract in WTI futures, which is the front month, 68.49, which is a new multi-month low. But more than that, we're moving in on the summer lows, which means if we go much lower with energy prices and oil prices in particular, that's going to be quite a different low, quite a serious, more serious low. But in addition to lower prices, we're seeing Contango really expand across the WTI futures curve. The February 2024 contract is 68.75, which means it's 26 cents into Contango. And what Contango means is essentially the market's saying, we've got too much oil in the current marketplace. We need to divert some of it to storage. So we're going to incentivize those who can store it by paying a higher price in the future. That's the contango shape on the curve, where backwardation is the opposite. We don't have enough oil in the current marketplace, so we're going to disincentivize storage by, by paying lower prices for oil in the future, or whatever commodity it might be. Given the fact that we've had so many production cuts from OPEC, 
and so many production problems from other parts of the world, you wouldn't expect to see Contango at all and the WTI futures curve, let alone to this degree. And it only gets worse from there. So the, despite oil production cuts, despite what's supposed to be backwardation and steep backwardation over a lack of supply, we're seeing contango continue to spread, not just in terms of the front month, but it's moving down the curve too. The April 2024 contract, which is the three month spread, that's at 70 cents, 77 cents contango, which is more than it had been at any point last year. That's something we're going to come back to as well. Contango has spread currently on the WTI futures curve all the way down to the August 2024 contract. So despite the fact that OPEC is saying we're going to pull production off of, off of the marketplace and we're going to continue to do so into early next year, the current market, the WTI futures curve shape says that supply restriction isn't going to be enough to rebalance the oil market in favor of supply. It is looking like demand is increasingly so weak that it's going to take much more for supply cuts in order to reach, achieve that sort of rebalancing. So OPEC wants to steady oil prices and the market is saying, you're gonna to have to do more than that, pal, because we've got more demand problems than you even realize. Now, OPEC just put out a statement uh, at the end of November, which they announced just how much supply they're restricting. The OPEC Secretariat noted the announcement of several OPEC plus countries of additional voluntary cuts to the total of 2.2 million barrels per day. That's a substantial amount aimed at supporting the stability and balance of oil markets. Yes, that was the aim, supporting and rebalancing oil markets. And the oil market is saying we're too much demand here, too much, too much demand destruction here. These voluntary cuts are calculated from the 2024 required production level as per the 35th OPEC ministerial meeting held in July and June 4th, 2023, and are in addition to the voluntary cuts previously announced in April 2023 and later extended until the end of 2024. So despite all of these efforts over recent months, again, the oil market is rebalancing in favor of weak demand and rebalancing more and more strenuously in favor of weak demand. Now, OPEC had forecast <laughs> quite ridiculously that oil demand, they thought oil demand was going to surge in the fourth quarter from around 28.5 million barrels per day in the third quarter to just a ridiculous 31 million barrels per day, per day in the fourth quarter. And then they thought it would level off around 29 and three quarters to 30 million barrels per day in all of next year. So that what the oil, what the, first of all, the oil market is saying, that, that forecast for demand is completely ridiculous. There's nothing like that happening. But more than that, it's becoming far weaker into further into the future as we're seeing in the spreading contango. It's not about seasonality in terms of maybe there's some, some, some winter explanation for why demand hasn't living up in the fourth quarter. Instead, this is extensive and extending weakness into next year. The markets are pricing increasingly adverse scenarios. Back at the end of November, Russian Deputy Prime Minister, who was the lead OPEC Plus negotiator, Alexander Novak, said, these measures, the supply restrictions, will help overcome the period of low demand in the winter and ensure the stable operation of oil markets and the balance of supply and demand. And in the two weeks since he made that statement, the oil curve, the oil market itself, lower prices, more contango, they're telling you that it was not some winter thing. This is not a seasonal low point in demand that can be easily papered over by substantial supply cuts. Instead, demand really is gotten that weak. And again, this is a global phenomenon. We're seeing it in the United States in WTI futures. We're seeing it in overseas benchmarks. We're seeing it in gasoline prices, despite the fact that gasoline demand inventories up until recent months have been incredibly low. And that's another important point that comes up in these curves and the curve changes. What they're telling you is not just what we should expect or what the probabilities are moving forward. They're also telling you when everything began to really change. And that's where the corroboration with other markets like bond markets really becomes compelling and powerful because we're talking about late September into October. We keep coming back time and time again to this timing. 
which is September and October, something big change, not just in oil, not just in bonds, but behind both of those, which is the deflationary economic scenario, deflationary recession economic scenario that more and more are getting picked up on in financial markets, which means at some point down the road, we're going to see it in the data, including the CPI. So while the CPI was disinflationary in large part because of oil and gasoline in November, as I said, you ain't seen nothing yet, at least according to the energy markets and the energy markets cooperating with everything else. Now we've been here before many times. Uh, I'll give you a pretty ex admittedly extreme example just to illustrate what I'm talking about here. In 2008, this is the summer of 2008. Remember, we had the contradictions. We had oil prices that were going up, signaling to mainstream economists in the Federal Reserve inflation risk, which this had nothing to do with inflation. So oil prices were surging sky high, far, far higher than they ever got over the last couple of years. At the same time, underneath, you had economic weakness that was eroding the foundation of the economy, not just in the short run either. You had tremendous economic weakness that kept building and building and building. And if you looked at strong oil prices, you thought there's no way there could be any economic weakness, which is the same, same thought that they had at the FOMC. The Federal Reserve's Open Market Committee met, met in early August of 2008, just in the shadow of that oil price surge up to around $145 a barrel. But by early August, oil was already down almost $30, suggesting to most rational observers, hey, something's not right here. But to most economists, and therefore the mainstream and the public who gets their economic information and their interpretations from these economists, this was nothing to worry about. So August 2008, the fellow's name is Steve Kamen, and what he said was, although oil consumption in the industrial economies clearly has slowed over the past year, this meaning 2007 into the middle of 2008, we have yet to see either a concerted buildup of U.S. oil inventories or any indications that oil demand among developing countries is slowing. So like today, waiting for confirmation in the form of building inventories. We won't believe the slowdown is here in demand until we actually see it in physical inventories or physical stocks. Don't want to take the word of the oil market, which that's a mistake. Therefore, Mr. Kamen continued, a further lurch upward in oil prices is a distinct possibility. Remember, this is August 2008. Moreover, with spot and futures prices having first soared and then plunged since your last meeting that was before, the relatively flat path of oil prices that we are projecting is only about $12 per barrel lower on balance than in the previous forecast. In the meantime, Indicators of foreign growth have come in a bit weaker than we expected, and inflation readings have been on the high side. These gloomier prospects of the international outlook counterbalance, to some extent, the improved tone of oil and other commodity markets. No, 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 no. The improved tone in oil and commodity markets was the oil and commodity markets saying, uh-oh, something bad is going on here. When you look at oil prices in 2008, the oil price didn't peak until July 14th, and again, as I said, $145 a barrel, but the curve had already flipped into contango in late May. So what that was saying is the market said, okay, yeah, we're still seeing a short run deficit, not enough supply, but just give it a few months. In a few months time, that, that the physical deficit is going to turn into a surplus. And then as the contango really sharpened over the next several months in the summertime, the market was saying, yes, we're, we're in balance in favor of supply in the early summer, but just you wait, it's not going to stay that way. And of course, as they were talking in August of 2008, oil prices were already plummeting. The contango part of the curve proved to be correct in that demand really was falling off, even if there was not that kind of confirmation that most people are looking for, including Federal Reserve and public officials. You didn't see it in the CPI, obviously. That wouldn't happen until later. And some of the economic accounts, including those in the United States, they didn't seem all that bad. But the oil market was forecasting is going to become pretty bad rather shortly. Now, again, that was an extreme example. And we're not making the same case here, just that it's the same type of setup. We've got one thing going on in the economy and oil markets saying we're seeing something else entirely. And this is something we saw last year. 
So the natural question is, are we making too much out of this contango signal? Because again, we saw it last year and in the United States anyway, the U.S. seemed to be able to avoid all of the worst cases that you might associate with this type of contango, this type of shape reshaping of the curve and lower oil prices. But that didn't mean that oil prices were wrong about the way the global economy shaped up in 2023. Even though the U.S. numbers look relatively stable and relatively decent compared to the rest of the world, we absolutely did see lots of demand fall off last year. Europe went into recession, a shallow one, but still a recession. And China, China was a big one, and China is going to continue to be a big one in the respect that reopening was supposed to really rebalance in favor of demand and supply, higher oil prices at the early part of 2023. And instead, the oil market was saying, we're not seeing it from China either. So though oil went into contango last year and it seemed like the U.S. avoided a recession, the fact that we're back in the same place with stronger contango on the curve in spite of what, are not, what have been in between 5.16 million barrels per day in total cumulative cuts from OPEC, which amounts to, by the way, about 5% of global daily demand. That's how much supply has been taken off since last year. And yet here we are yet again into deepening contango on the WTI curve. So while the world did not avoid contraction and lower demand, the U.S. might have, what the oil market is saying is this thing wasn't over. We didn't, the U.S. didn't dodge a bullet. It's just a matter of timing. Demand continues to fall off and fall off sharply in a way that we're seeing in coordination with bond markets and bond yields around the world. So we've got WTI at a new low, threatening to go below its summer low. Gasoline prices that are already below last year and moving into even lower comparisons to 2021, which is not a good sign there. You've got contango on the WTI futures curve, which is suggesting, strongly implying, that demand is, is not just weak today. It's not just about winter or something seasonal. It's forecast to continue to be weak well into next year, despite, again, OPEC's uh, announcements and OPEC's moves. And that's behind all of this. 5 million barrels per day have been cut between last year and this year, and the WTI curve is already moving into worse shape than it was a year ago. That's a powerful testament to how markets are increasingly unnerved by how things are developing in the global economy, where it comes to demand, but also monetary conditions too. We have to remember that as far as can tango as well. So the energy market signals are strong, they're fundamental, and they're about more than the Federal Reserve or the November CPI. Pay attention to energy, not Jay Powell, nor the BLS's shelter-filled imputations. Check out Eurodollar University's Christmas sale going on right now. That's at our webpage at eurodollar.university. As always, I thank you very much for joining me. Huge thank you, Eurodollar University members, Eurodollar University subscribers, any future members and subscribers. Thank you very much and Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays, all that. And until next time, take care.